George McNulty, machinist. Yeah? Your record shows you to be a hard worker with an abnormally small number of rejections. Yet you're always late. Yeah, that's, that's right. Gene Moorhead, inspector. You are charged with absenteeism. With two children to support, you have good reason to be at work every day. Indeed I do, Judge. Harry Holman, bench worker. That's me. You loaf on the job constantly. You make more trips to the washroom and water fountain than any other worker. So what? So what? Tom Garrity. Garrity, that's me. Garrity. You get paid every Saturday, and you haven't collected a full check for weeks. Quite a cut it makes, too, in me pocketbook. Quite a cut in my pocketbook, too. I know, I know. Ah, oh, here's what I've been looking for. Hal Finley, supervisor. Hal Finley. Hal Finley. Al Finley, you are charged with being constantly on guard to head off instances of lateness, loafing, and absenteeism. Is that correct? Yes, sir. You are charged with the handling of such cases in a manner calculated to prevent a more serious development. That's true, Judge. Have you done that, Hal Finley? Are you guilty or not guilty? Guilty or not guilty? get out to work. But it isn't as much work as it could be, and I think I've found the answer to why right here. I'm not making any excuses, Mr. Platt, but I don't know what to do. Maybe I can help you. We'll take a look around. Every time I hit this problem, I run into more excuses than a horse has hair. Sure you do, and you're going to keep on running into them. But, Mr. Platt... Now, I... maybe you haven't done as much about them as you can. Take McNulty, for instance. He's been beating the bell for weeks. Today, he missed it altogether. He's an awful good man. We need good men. On time. Every minute counts. Good morning. Good morning. You're late, McNulty. That's not my fault. You're supposed to now, get here. Now, just a minute, Hal. You've been consistently late, Mac. Now, what's the reason? Well, I live out Crestview way, and now, if I take the early bus, I get here too soon, and the guards won't let me in. Not even if it's raining. So I take the next bus, and what happens? I'm late. It's my fault. No, Mac. It's our fault for not finding out about it. Well, even if I took the early bus and could get in, I couldn't go to work. I should have asked you, Mac. Maybe the bus company could move their schedules up. Swell. That'd help out a lot of people. We'll do all we can, Mac. We'll do everything we can. Thanks. A few more times, and Mac might be tempted to stay out a whole day. Men don't like to be late, Hal. It gives them a guilty conscience. Why, don't you remember? Even at school, we'd rather play hooky than be late. Yeah, I remember. Listen, Holman. You've been in and out of that place a good deal lately. Anything the matter? No. No. Going to the washroom when it's necessary is one thing. But if it's for smoke, you better save that for your lunch hour or your rest period, because I'm not going to stand for it. Our customers need these parts, 
and the company's paying you for a full day's work. Besides, you're holding up others in another department. Now, is that fair? Well... Look, Holman. No more snitching smokes. Is it agreed? Okay. You did the right thing, Hal. I know Holman, and you've got to let him know that you won't stand for loafing. It's a good thing we caught that just when we did. Loafing, slowing down, are contagious. Just like McNulty's lateness could have been. Yeah. Looks like I'm the one that's late. Could be, Hal, could be. But don't take it too hard. Just because a worker's absent doesn't mean that he's deliberately or necessarily irresponsible. Absenteeism can be due to sudden or unexpected circumstances. Something the worker couldn't help, perhaps. Hello, Garrity. How are you, sir? Garrity, you never seem to be able to put in a full week. You're always taking days off. And if I was smart, I'd take them all off. I'm getting fed up doing the same thing day after day. I've been cutting six-foot pieces for too long. It's tough, Hal, when a man loses interest in his work. He's not the only one I've got that feels that way. Well, switch them, Hal. Switch them. Swap jobs around and let each man learn as many skills as you can without letting production down. Maybe you ought to be foreman. <laughs> I've checked your work. I know it's not too heavy. It's got variety. Yet you're not here every day to do it. Maybe you didn't check far enough. How so? what I mean? I see what you mean, but I don't know what we can do about it. There's lots we can do. We can check on the ships. And maybe we can persuade some of the merchants and professional people to change ours. In any event, Hal, we ought to know the facts first, and you can do that. Yes, yes, I know. Now, look here, I want to work, but I can't come in when I'm not feeling well. I've had a cold for weeks now. I've I... noticed you haven't been up to par, Marie. What have you done about it? <sighs> I've tried to get rid of it. Well, we've done a lot to prevent illness and accidents, but the workers don't always take advantage of it. You know, how you could do a lot of education along those lines. Now, you could uh, check a sniffle and send it to the dispensary before it becomes cold. Loafing, slowing down, or contagious. Hal Findlay. Get the facts first. Hal Findlay. Well, there's lots we can do. I sure hope I don't dream. <laughs> 